there are countless cultures, all with amazing mythological creatures and stories, but none strike me as rich as when we speak of Asian mythology. From their rich colors to their incredible detail, the mythology of Asia is very well documented and in many cases, seen as real. Explore with us this week as we delve into Asian mythology, and the amazing similarities found within some of the most important countries within the Asian continent. Welcome to the Cryptic Conclave. I think it would be fitting to start with one of the most popular and well-known mythological creatures there is, and that must be no doubt the dragon. Dragons were a part of the world, probably even before we came to exist. In China the dragon is a symbol of great power and strength and is associated with luck and prosperity. In China the dragon is known as Long. The same can be said for Japan where the dragon is known as Ryu and Korea where the dragon is called Yong, and they see the dragon not only as a sign of power, but as a symbol of earth fertility and the bringing of rainwater. The image of the dragon has been persistent amongst cultures, even beyond the Asian folklore. One of the few differences that we find is that Korean dragons grew more beards and that not all the dragons are associated with earthly elements, as we see in European cultures or games like Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons are existent in just about every culture and you will see it appear more and more as we delve into different cultures in the future. These similarities have become evident to us thanks to modern-day media and art, and the popularity of dragons in video games, has made this one of the most intriguing and popular creatures. There are many creatures in Asian mythology, and we find it quite intriguing that so many of them are shared across borders. This can be perhaps thanks to migration, and the ancient age of some of these creatures that supersedes any modern-day boundaries. Another example that we find across several cultures is the phoenix. The phoenix is a mythological bird associated with rebirth, auspiciousness and it appears across the yet not limited to the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean cultures alike as a symbol of beauty, grace and high virtue. Some of the similarities found within are its association with virtue and grace and royalty, and the universal concept that the phoenix is a symbol of rebirth and reincarnation. In China it is known as Feng Huang. In Japan it is known as Ho-O. And in Korea it is known as Bong Huang. Yet even within such similar societies we can find a contrasting difference with the phoenix when it pertains to other aspects. For example in China, the feng huang combines male, feng, and female, huang, characteristics, symbolizing both yin and yang, and it is typically depicted as a composite of several birds including the head of a rooster, the body of a duck, the tail of a peacock, making it quite colorful and diverse in features. Then we look at the ho-o, while influenced by the Chinese feng huang, it is more simplified in Japanese mythology. It appears more frequently in tapestries and other artworks, particularly in connection with themes of peace and tranquility, and it is depicted with a more streamlined form than the feng huang, focusing on beauty and elegance with less emphasis on the composite aspects. Then in Korea bong huang is quite similar to the Chinese feng huang but less commonly featured in mainstream culture compared to its Chinese and Japanese counterparts. It symbolizes authority in the execution of justice, and is used less as a symbol of the royal family than in China, and while it shares similarities with the Chinese phoenix in its composite nature, it often has a more singular and less varied depiction in Korean art. We continue exploring as we move to yet another amazing creature that is quite popular. The Kilin. The Kirin. And. The Girin. Are mythical creatures with similar characteristics found in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean folklore, respectively. While they share many traits, Each culture has its own unique interpretations and symbolism associated with these legendary beasts. All three represent a single mythological concept originating from Chinese mythology that spread to Japan and Korea through cultural exchange. Typically depicted as chimeric beasts with the body of a deer, the tail of an ox, scales like a dragon, and cloven hooves. They are often shown with flames enveloping their bodies. Known for their peaceful and benevolent disposition, these creatures appear only during the reign or birth of a benevolent and wise ruler or at times of great peace. They symbolize good luck, prosperity, and serenity, and are considered omens of auspicious events. However, they do have some differences like Qilin from China is often more dragon-like in appearance, reflecting Chinese dragon aesthetics with emphasis on auspicious power and justice. In Chinese culture, the Qilin is sometimes portrayed more robustly and associated with scholarly virtues. Kirin from Japan is typically less ferocious and more deer-like, reflecting the Japanese adaptation and interpretation. The Kirin in Japan has also been associated with the beer brand Kirin, which uses this mythical creature as its logo, indicating its cultural integration and commercial representation. Girin from Korea is similar to the Kilin, but it might not be as commonly featured in mainstream culture as in China or Japan. In Korean art, 
It is often depicted similarly to the Chinese Qilin but may appear more ethereal and less physically imposing. While the foundational elements are similar, artistic interpretations can vary, Japanese representations tend to be more stylized and ethereal, Korean depictions align closely with Chinese aesthetics but with localized nuances. The prominence and frequency with which these creatures appear in folklore and cultural symbols vary, with the Qilin being a more prominent figure in Chinese mythology, while the Kirin and Giran are less central in their respective cultures. While there are so many different mythological creatures in Asian cultures, not all appear as similar as the ones we have shown you, and within this concept we would like to now discuss, what is perhaps one of our favorites within Asian mythology and that is the fox. The fox appears across many Asian countries but it's quite predominant in China, Japan, and Korea, where the fox is a huge part of mainstream entertainment as well as a rich part of their respective mythologies and cultures. In Japan the fox is known by the name Kitsune. Kitsune are mythical foxes that are intelligent beings with magical abilities. They are often depicted as having multiple tails, with the number of tails up to nine indicating their age, wisdom, and power. Kitsune are associated with the Shinto spirit Kami Inari and are seen as protectors, but they can also be tricksters. Kitsune are integral to Japanese mythology and are featured in numerous folk stories, religious texts, and works of art. In China the fox is known as Huli Jing which translates to fox spirit. Like Kitsune, Huli Jing can have multiple tails and possess the ability to transform into beautiful men and women. They can be either benevolent spirits or malevolent entities, depending on the story. They appear in various Chinese myths and are often involved in stories that teach moral lessons about excess and spiritual corruption. In Korea the fox is known as Kumiho or Gumiho, which translates to nine-tailed fox. Unlike its generally benevolent Japanese and Chinese counterparts, the Kumiho is almost always depicted as a malevolent creature that shapeshifts into a beautiful man or woman, often with the intention of consuming the heart or liver of their victims in hopes of becoming human. Kumiho stories are well known in Korean folklore and often serve as cautionary tales about the dangers of seduction and deceit. The Kumiho is believed to live for 1,000 years, during which it gains the ability to transform into a human. This transformation is typically associated with its desire to blend into human society. There are variations in the legend regarding how a Kumiho can become fully human. One common thread is that the Kumiho must refrain from killing or consuming human flesh for a thousand days to transform into a human. If it succeeds, it can lose its nine tails and live as a human being. In some versions of the myth, if a Kumiho fails to meet these conditions, it is cursed to remain a Kumiho forever. The Kitsune in contrast can become a human after 100 years. And the Huli Jing has a much less strict age for transformation. We hope you have enjoyed this week's video and that you have learned something new or cool. We wish we could spend hours talking about some of the other Asian mythology creatures we have discovered, so tune in next week when we continue exploring more Asian mythology. Thanks for watching the Cryptic Conclave. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.